Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of my um, conversation with Rama. Um, it was really exciting. Can't wait for you guys to hear it. Enjoy. So, and then let me ask about the now in the culture space of agency because yeah. I, I I guess I, I think everyone has a few friends who are in agency yeah. in one way or another. Yeah. And agency people talk about the toxicity. Yeah. They talk about the pressure. They talk about the, yeah. the workload and everything that comes with it. Yeah. Do you think that um, do you think that it's worth it? Do you think that it's sustainable? I would say it's worth it um, because I'm not saying, and, and, and this is not to condone anything. Yeah. I'm just saying when you're young enough, yeah. you know, you party, it's normal for you when yeah. you're like 25, 27. Like when you're below 30, it's normal for you to say, I'm partying on a Wednesday. Yeah. Well, depending and you're on you're going to bend, you know, you're going <laughs> to bend, you see you till three in the morning, then you sleep for like two hours, the next and day you're, like, at it. you're yeah. productive. Yeah. When you have that energy, instead of, you know, spending all that energy partying and doing all that stuff that just takes your money away. Mm -hmm. um, I would say in terms of personal growth, mm -hmm. um, spend your time building yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and you can either go for training, go for classes, online classes that are available, or mm -hmm. you could go the route of give me more responsibilities mm -hmm. and I will get my experience for my career mm -hmm. based on those responsibilities. At some points, it gets, it, gets, it gets a bit difficult. I'm not going to lie. Because uh, the work-life balance, mm -hmm. especially for people who are 30 plus, mm -hmm. when now you want to have, you want to have a family. Mm -hmm. You want a wife, you want kids. Mm -hmm. And you keep asking yourself, why am I working so hard mm -hmm. if these kids don't see enough of me? Like, who am I working for? I'm no longer working for myself. Yeah. Then now you start thinking about agency differently. And yeah. now you find a lot of guys transition either to senior roles, yeah. very senior. Yeah. You're in charge of the guys who are working that much Doing because they hours. need that. Yeah. Yeah? They need to work so that they get things faster. Yeah. Or you move to the client side mm -hmm. and you yeah, become a client. Because you know, <laughs> clients have a regular schedule. Yeah. Yeah. You get in maybe at 8 in the morning, you leave at 5, 6, yeah. and you're gone for the day. Okay. At least you have, you, you, you'll be making the same amount of money. Yeah. You'll be seeing your kids easier. more often, but then client side, like we used to always joke about, it's a bit boring because you only work on one brand. Yeah. You know, like if your brand gets boring, my gosh, I don't know yeah. what you're going to do. Gonna happen to you. <laughs> so, so before we leave the agency conversation, maybe if you could just give us like a really quick skeleton because uh, you talked about um, the, the structure within a digital um, yeah. agency and what that sort of looks like from yeah. bottom to the top. Yeah. 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 So if I give the basic structure of a digital agency, yeah. you have a... The guys who post what is seen a lot is yeah. the stuff on social media. You have community yeah. managers at the okay. very bottom. Yeah. You have a community manager <clears throat> and you have your, yeah, so you have a community manager at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Beside the community managers, you have media buyers. And how much would the community manager be? be? It depends. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can't give you a figure. Mm -hmm. Because I'd be lying. You know, it depends on the industry you're in. Are okay. you on the client side? Are you on the agency side? Okay. How much experience do you have? Okay. So there's a community manager at the entry level. Mm -hmm. So that's a person who um, does reporting. Mm -hmm. um, they post and schedule mm -hmm. stuff that is going out there, the yeah. communication. Okay. And then I'd say on the same level or, mm -hmm. or maybe slightly higher, you have the media buyers. Mm -hmm. So your media buyers are the guys who boost the staff, the community major, manager is, so they work close, to, okay. close together. Yeah. Then you have your DTP designers. Mm -hmm. The DTP designers are guys who are given what's, what the creatives, mm -hmm. the art director, the creative directors come up with in terms of a, of a, um, in terms of a creative direction. Mm -hmm. And they recite that stuff for yeah. digital. Because yeah. you have to put it on Google, you have to put it on apps, mm -hmm. you have to put it on your social medias, you have, it has to go on email. Mm -hmm. So the community manager does the distribute the content everywhere. Mm -hmm. And beside them, they sit with designers, ETP guys who mm -hmm. recite the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then above them, on some agencies beside them, mm -hmm. you have the media planners. Mm -hmm. so the media planners decide where the content is going to go mm -hmm. and for how long. Mm -hmm. Above the media planners, you have the media and innovations guys, like mm -hmm. the, the media leads. Mm -hmm. So these are the guys who come up to us and tell us it's the, the latest technology on each 
specific channel. Yeah. This is how we can utilize some of these things. If there's AI, mm -hmm. those are the guys. Mm -hmm. If it's determining the budget for the quarter, for the year, and ensuring yeah. budgets are spent, nothing goes above, beyond. Those are the guys. Those are the guys. Okay. Um, beside those guys, you have the strategists. Mm -hmm. So you have the content strategists. Mm -hmm. Content strategy is the guy who decides, yeah, this creative idea is going to be interpreted like this. This is how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then above that, now you have the head of digital mm -hmm. in most cases. Mm -hmm. So um, there's copywriters somewhere in that structure, mm -hmm. which can either be dedicated within the department or guys who are outside of the department. Maybe they sit on the creative side. Mm -hmm. But you have copywriters, you have art directors, yeah. um, and you have your creative director. Yeah. And then the guys who oversees all those talents is now the head of digital, mm. who's a guy who can do everything everyone does. Okay. Because you understand everyone's role. Yeah. You've worked vertically throughout the throughout entire the structure. You can tell when someone is crapping yeah. around, you know, yeah. you guy, you're not doing, you're not you're pulling your socks. Job, yeah. You can, you can spot the gaps in the department. Mm. You can see where you need to reinforce stuff. You can tell when you need to add more talent to the department. So that's the, that's the head of digital. Okay. And then that's the, the guy who reports directly to the, um, to the executive, the executive creative, di creative director. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The guy who now is, okay, so we sit down, you have an idea. Your idea has limitations. It can't be interpreted on digital. Or if it's, di if, if it's interpreted on digital use this direction. Mm. So you do a lot of strategic input uh, at the top level, and then you have guys now do the physical and the everyday work be below you. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, I think that's a really comprehensive um, um, response. We'll try and turn that into an infographic. <laughs> <laughs> you can anyway, you actually um, do it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to move to the influencing side of things. Yeah. Um, because at some point, if I'm not mistaken, you decide um, at the time when your family decide to take on um, influencer, influencer life full time. Yeah. Um, and generate money and I guess live off of influencer money yeah. one what brings about that decision and then then i guess we can discuss what what that process actually was like so influencing to me is, used to be a side gig mm -hmm. and and unfortunately it became such a big side gig for me like i do you know how people are just known for being like uh, like a commentary like nowadays you see the guys on on studio when you go to the when you watch the news mm -hmm. There's a guy who's called as an expert on everything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, yeah. This guy has a comment on everything. Yeah, yeah. When there's a political debate, he'll be in the studio. Yeah. When there's a debate about the economy, he'll be in the studio. Yeah. He's a well-read guy. Yeah. Some, it's not that they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. They just know enough and they're interesting enough to be the guys that are called yeah. into the studio and yeah. there's something to be discussed. Yeah. When you need an expert, experts are the guys doing economics mm -hmm. at World Bank, you know, this guy is a, <laughs> he's an enthusiast, he's an economy yeah, enthusiast, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they, they call them enthusiasts. Yeah. So I got into influencing as an enthusiast of a lot of different topics, mm -hmm. um, ranging from advertising, art, sports. Mm -hmm. so I was, I'm not a sports journalist, I'm not an athlete, but I follow a lot of those things a lot. So I would follow a lot of that stuff and comment it, comment on it a lot. Mm -hmm. And so in those interactions, I started growing a fan base and a followership based on common interests. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I got to a point where I had around like 12,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And um, Scanard was running its first influencer program. They were the first ones to run it. Mm -hmm. An influencer campaign. Mm -hmm. It was a pilot thing. And they reached out to me. Like, you know, you, the way you write your content, the way you explain things, the way you communicate with people. Yeah. We want to give you a gig where you're going to, pr to be promoting a specific product. Yeah. And we're going to pay you 25000 Yeah. At that point, nobody had ever given me 25000 to do anything for them. Yeah. At this point, I'm a volunteer, mm. you know, and just chilling, you know, for the most part of the day, I'm painting T-shirts and selling T-shirts as customizable yeah. items. Yeah. I was used to paint on shoes. The same thing I used to do in primary school you for sets. Cutting it, cutting I just it carried it now after yeah. school. I was doing jackets. I was customizing denim jackets. Yeah. I was customizing shoes. I was customizing jeans and I'm paying. I'm, I'm getting paid to do that. Yeah. In between, I'm volunteering. And then there's this social media thing coming up. So they pay me like 25 Gs to push a product. And I'm like, bro, you can actually earn 
That's the first nobody ever paid me with a check before yeah. that. Yeah. That's my first check I banked. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, you can make this just by being online. Yeah. I was in 20, 2011, I think. Mm-hmm. And so it became a regular thing because yeah. now you see the, the thing about advertising is people follow trends. Yeah. So what happens with the big agencies, a lot of small agencies replicate. Yeah. Now, if the big agencies mess up, a lot of the small ones mess up because yeah. they always follow the success Listen. model. Yeah. So the success models, and sometimes you're a victim of your own success. Yeah. That's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. Um, I got into influencing and I started making money off gigs. Yeah. First was Twitter, and then I opened Instagram, came along. Mm-hmm. You know, that time Instagram was only just strictly for mm-hmm. iPhone users. Yeah. And <laughs> they opened it up to everyone. <laughs> Us guys in gear do call Androids. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and pixelated yeah. photos <laughs> yeah. with our Androids. Yeah. And the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you get to, uh, what, how much money must you be making to get to the point that you're like, you know what, um, uh, let's give this um, influencer thing a shot? So... I can tell you since I started doing influencer Mm -hmm. campaigns in 2012, Mm -hmm. the only time I've ever done influencer campaigns full time Mm -hmm. was, I think, between during the pandemic Mm -hmm. in 2000 and between 2020, I'd say to 2021, Mm -hmm. before the second and the third lockdown. Mm -hmm. Business was good. Yeah, so I was doing it full time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the process of establishing a couple of businesses out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, you know, when people hype working from home and you think that's going to be the future, yeah, then things go back to normal. Like, you also have to go back to normal. Yeah. So I'm back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> so the specific period I'm, I'm, I'm talking about is, if I'm not mistaken, well, I guess while the green calabash was still, was still around, there was a point in time where... I think I saw a video of you saying, I'm going back to work. Um, um, this this um, influence the creative economy isn't, you know, sustaining, isn't sustainable right now. So yeah. I'm going back to work. That's specifically what I'm asking about. It's, it's the same, it's the same, um, it's the same example I was giving. You know, you could go work somewhere where someone guarantees you I'll give you 40 Gs Mm -hmm. on the 27th of every month Mm -hmm. and you can plan yourself with that 40K. Mm -hmm. Versus you saying, I can make 90. Mm -hmm. In three months. No, you'll make it in one month, but it'll take you three months to be paid. Yeah. Ah, right. You get me? So when you do your your math, if you you have to wait one month for 40K, Mm -hmm. compared to you have to wait 90 days for 90k, even if you work within the same month, yeah, it means the guy who's paying you after 90 days has actually paid you 30k per month. Yeah, this 40k that's guaranteed is what yeah. you can make, you know. Yeah, now when you have responsibilities, mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a very simple <laughs> let me go for so, security, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what ended up happening was <clears throat> when I recorded a video on Green Calabash saying I'm going back to employment. It's not mm-hmm. that I wasn't employed. I was running my own consultancy agency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was doing well. Mm-hmm. So I felt like being out outside sometimes, if, especially when you're in an industry that's ever evolving and it's just growing. Mm-hmm. If you do it on a personal level, you either have to do it as an owner mm-hmm. who is, has no interest of going back to ever mm-hmm. refresh their, their skill sets. Mm-hmm. Because if you're out there for a long time and the agencies are the ones being equipped with what's new in the industry, mm-hmm. what's innovation and all that, at some point you'll have to go back to learn what's happening now. Yeah. And that's what I did yeah. when I went back to employment. I went to learn, okay, media has really grown. Mm-hmm. Influencer marketing has really grown. Yeah. I'm, not go- I'm not going back as an influencer. I'm not going back as a copywriter. I went back as a business head. Mm-hmm. Mm, heading about eight to 12 businesses, I'm in charge of what they're communicating online. Mm -hmm. And so that was a point where I learned a lot of the stuff that I need to know um, in terms of, you know, what are the innovations that are currently there? Mm -hmm. Um, What can I integrate into my strategies? What can I, how how much value can I give brands if I add some of these elements? Um, Yeah, that's that's what I went back to learn. Okay. Yeah. And and based of your experience, um, what 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 should a um, 
an influencer be making on an even if you're going to work on a, on an annual basis because of course the, the the payment structures are 90 days among other things but how much should you be expecting to make a year in a year if you're a, a, a good influencer i'll tell you what mm. um influencing has much to do with the brand you build and how you engage with people just as it does the number of followers you have mm. there's a reason why it's categorized you have nano influencers you have micros you have macros you have celebrities yeah they all work differently yeah. and you'll notice with celebrities and i and i guess a lot of people work with influencers nowadays. With celebrities, the engagement rate is quite low. Yeah. So it depends on what you're selling. If you just need awareness, you can work with celebs. Yeah. They charge more, they engage less. Because mm-hmm. you find like a celebrity who has a million followers, it's not going to engage a million people. Yeah. Those are just the number of guys that oh, follow that follow person. Me, yeah. I'm interested in you because you sing. You know, I love your music. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't care about what you sell, but if, you sell, if, you sell, if you're selling something to me and I learn about it through you, yeah. you know, that's for awareness. Yeah. Um, I would say if you have a good brand and you have a considerable amount of followers, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be earning less than 100K per gig. Mm. And the gigs don't come every month. Mm. You know, mm. you'll find instances where maybe you do a gig for six months and then the rest of the time, there's nothing coming mm-hmm. along, even for celebrities who are influencers. Yeah, yeah. You don't get that a million bob deal every every month. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And the one thing people don't realize about influencing is you have to play the long game, mm-hmm. because if you're doing every gig, every month, every year, the same brands who are giving you these gigs after two years will be like, no, he's been overused. Let's look for someone. Yeah, <laughs> they're the ones who've used you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same people who are yeah. giving you the business will tell you that. Yeah, yeah. So you have to play the long game in terms of how are you evolving as a person, mm. how are you evolving as a brand. So there's going to be a lot of highs and lows. The lows where you're not getting gigs mm. are where you're building the highs. Mm. Like as a person, how are you growing? Mm. Are you maturing? Mm. You know? Are you, are, you, are you doing, are you growing your brand, your personal brand? Are you growing yourself as a person, mm-hmm. as you, not mm-hmm. as your handle, you know? And Ramsey from 10 years ago is not Ramsey in 2023. Yeah. They're totally different people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I still have the same character, but in terms of personality, yeah. I've been exposed to different things, so I'm growing with my audience. Yeah. So you have to remember as an influencer, you have to grow with your audience. Yeah. A lot of guys let their audience outgrow them. So you're stuck in the things you're doing in 2013. Yeah. Of course, you're going to command less money. Yeah. Um, like right now, the, a lot of the influencer gigs are going to Gen Zs. Mm. As guys, you know, millennials. <laughs> Unless you've built a brand that's yeah, like it, where yeah. a lot of your peers are. Yeah. You're not going to be, out. yeah, you're not yeah. going to be struggling and fighting with Gen Zs for gigs. Yeah. Yeah. They're hungrier. They're hungrier. They're doing more than you. They are yeah. charging less sometimes. <laughs> you think you have experience. Yeah. They have been yeah. on this platform for 10 years, so I'll yeah. charge you yeah. for 10 years. Nobody yeah. cares, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. So, so if you were to try and get, um, and I, I want to put you in a box, if you were to try and get some sort of average, because um, um, yes, there's the sporadic gigs that come and go, but if you were to try and give some sort of average, like what, are we, what would you be saying a good influencer would be making? A good influencer probably a makes year. in yeah. a year maybe five hundred Gs. Yeah, and that, that's in a like, proper year. Yeah, on the minimum, on the and, lower side. And um, I get I get based off of your experience in agency. I wanna tap into that a little bit for someone who's doing this a bit more professionally and is like, this is my thing. Like, um, I'm really creating content. I would uh, say like guys sending you rate cards and stuff. In yeah. in in terms of frequency. Yeah. Um, if you're really good at what you do. Maybe in a year okay. you'll get like four, four to like six gigs, mm. good paying gigs. Yeah. And each of those gigs maybe is anything between 200 to like I'm maybe like four sock. Mm. And you get like maybe four to six in a year. So I'd say if you're good at what you're doing as an influencer, you make minimum maybe a, a, a million bob in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A million bob in a year. But that, you know, that comes after you invest in yourself, yeah. Yeah. invest in your brand. Um, I think one of the biggest takeouts for me has been that um, 
you know how people say i wish you looked at me the way i look at myself yeah. i my friends tell me bro you know you're a brand and i'll be yeah. like what do you mean a brand what is that <laughs> pressure i don't need that pressure on myself yeah so i would carry myself as a regular person on yeah. the internet because that was my formula mm. when i began okay. and i saw no need to change it because mm. once you change your brand you sort of lose out on a lot of the guys who yeah. followed you for a specific reason yeah. like if i followed you because you post demonic stuff yeah and then you start posting holy holy things bro i'm uh, done i'm gone i'm sorry <laughs> may I followed yeah. you for the toxic stuff yeah yeah so i've evolved my brand i wouldn't say i've evolved it in the way that you know rama you're an influencer now think like a brand you know you're a brand but then i've grown with my 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 content is reflective yeah. of where i am in life yeah so i've never felt the need to to have a brand so to speak because yeah. the problem with also having a brand and, and this is something that someone said I don't know who said but the more you build yourself into your brand <clears throat> the more you build yourself into a brand mm -hmm. the less control you have over what the brand does mm -hmm. so if you're there pushing yourself as a corporate person and one day you just feel like I mean I need to walk from here to Jua mm -hmm. let me walk home mm -hmm. people start seeing on the road they start saying oh this guy chapad um jama look at him squandered <laughs> his riches <laughs> yeah. you're yeah. just walking home cuz it's healthy you know <laughs> yeah yeah this guy is squandered yeah oh, or sometimes if for example you've become a dad you've become a mom and you're not sharing that with guys yeah then all of a sudden one day people just see you the seven year old you yeah. say aka kana fichanga watoto you know <laughs> yeah yeah so you you have to be honest and i think with with influencing the most important thing is authenticity is your currency mm. and you don't go you, do, you don't need to go out of your way to prove that you're authentic mm. you just have to be reflective of where you are in life yeah. like i used to eat at a kibanda like when i got into agency mm. i used to enjoy those 10 bob samosas mm. beside the road mm. and then one day i started eating samosas from china plate because yeah. we were in the same building yeah Then I went home and tried those samosas like I've been eating crap for the last three years I am never doing that again. Yeah. So I moved. <laughs> I don't eat sa I don't eat kibanda samosas anymore. Yeah. No. I mean if I can get myself this yeah then I mean why am I working hard? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm being harassed here um, um for time but I have to I have I have to um I or I want to really talk about this. And this other element is I guess family and um family and money. Yeah. And um it's sort of how that comes in. Yeah. Um let me start at a rather sensitive point potentially which is and the reason I'm also asking is because I you know one way or another went through um or have been through or, you know yeah went through a pretty similar thing is yeah. when you meet um your ex when yeah. you meet your ex um how many people are speaking to you about the financial commitment that it would require for you to be in a long term relationship um with her as sort of a whether it's a deterrence or awareness um thing of basically, of basically just letting you know like are you sure do you know how much um um this is going to take do you know um what this is going to look like do you have any conversations of that sort um i think in terms of finances you have to speak to the person you're getting into anything serious with yeah from the very beginning yeah then yeah, this is how much i make how much do you make yeah um if we were to combine our efforts because you see now we we're, we're talking to we're in a different generation yeah and then i i i i keep telling guys all the time like we are the most confused lot ever mm. you know our folks when they were when they were growing up when they were they were our age all they had to worry about was am i a provider so their confusion came in the sense of there's there's a clash and there's identity issues between culture and religion because your guka your dad probably never practiced christianity mm -hmm. they were not born into that religion whether it's christianity or whether it's islam they were not born into that so their identity issues came in the sense of you know me I'm a provider yeah but i'm very confused about whether i should follow traditional mm -hmm. things or western things mm -hmm. so there was that identity crisis and identity issues around that with dudes our age we've accepted if your dad was muslim me i'm muslim mm -hmm. if you have those cultural things you accept them mm -hmm. i me have been grown i've been brought up into these things mm -hmm. our identity problems now come in a sense of now it's time to live mm -hmm. with somebody else 
babes have been empowered mm-hmm. me i'm talking about babes have been empowered as a city boy mm-hmm. what i see i don't know about the countryside mm-hmm. so it's maybe different out yeah. there yeah but me the babes i talk to Empowered. <laughs> <laughs> empowered women they can yeah, afford their own drinks i saw i saw tweet there that they, they don't go out with nairobi babes they'll they'll get you drunk and then take you home in their mazda <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the 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 women I'm talking yeah. to are empowered. Yeah. And if you're getting into anything serious with mm-hmm. somebody who's empowered remember they the money gives you power mm-hmm. to walk away if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's no longer a hold. I can't come to a babe and say I have money so I can mm-hmm. do what I want because yeah. you know you need the money yeah. and I'm the one making it. Yeah. She's making just as much as you most yeah. times or yeah. even more in other yeah. cases. Yeah. So you need to have those conversations with women you're dating and just mm-hmm. say hey listen um guy you know what this is how much i make mm-hmm. this is my underwear money mm-hmm. you know <laughs> this no matter what happens i need this yeah because i can't keep asking you yeah. do i take five g's from the joint account so i can buy myself underwear yeah. that's embarrassing yeah. so yeah. you put some for you for yourself mm-hmm. Tell her as well. You, you need to bra money. What? Yeah. You can't keep coming to the joint account to ask me for money so you can buy yeah. yourself bras and panties. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah. So you separate those. Mm-hmm. And then you say, okay, so we're coming together and we're planning life long term. Mm-hmm. What do we need for a long time? Mm-hmm. What do we need for that long term thing to work? First, we need maybe a moti. Mm-hmm. We need a decent place to live. Mm-hmm. Before you even think of mortgages and houses. Mm-hmm. We need a moti. We need a decent place to live. We need living expenses mm-hmm. and then you decide okay so i'm going to take care of this mm-hmm. you take care of that mm-hmm. that's how you do it mm-hmm. because and it's something i keep telling all my buddies i keep telling everybody you are a traditional man you go for a traditional woman mm-hmm. or you're a modern man and go for a modern woman you mm-hmm. can't be it's as simple as that yeah you you i don't date babes who tell me you have to take care of everything cuz me bro what, <laughs> what are you working for if you can't if you can't chip in yeah If you can't chip in, yeah. what is your money for? Yeah. Because one day you'll wake up, stand up and leave. Then you don't yeah. take half of my stuff. Yeah. And you are saving all your money. <laughs> <laughs> How? Only well, I'm stupid. <laughs> you think I'm foolish. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. you have to have those finance conversations early on and say, mm-hmm. "Hey, for us to be happy, mm-hmm. for us to be content with the life we have, mm-hmm. these are the things we need. Mm-hmm. This is the amount of money we need to put in these mm-hmm. projects." Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring this you bring that yeah and it works respectfully mm-hmm. because at some point if you don't have that conversation yeah a lot of disrespect will check in yeah like you see how people behave and they pay for everything yeah at some point I'll forget and tell you ah, you don't even a contributor in this thing what are you telling <laughs> me <laughs> and it 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 will come out on your face you know like yeah, <laughs> whether yeah, you like it or not yeah, yeah and also for babes me I'd encourage because I have sisters I have I have sisters I have a daughter mm-hmm. I'll tell women like if you're working for your money you spend your money with or on things you love mm-hmm. with people you love or on things you love yeah if you're not ready to spend your money yeah. on something you love then yeah. why are you working Yeah. So you just bump yeah. and then say I need a traditional man to take care of me. Yeah. So they do they, do, they yeah. do that. But you can't be a modern woman looking yeah. for a traditional man yeah. or a traditional man looking, looking for a modern woman. Yeah. It, it will never work. Okay. Yeah. I have two questions for you in that context. One is potential low point. Yeah. Um low low financial point that you had as a single man. Yeah. And what that um did or does for you psychologically and emotionally against um a low point as a family man and yeah. what that um is now psychologically and emotionally and what the difference potentially is if there is any so it says as as um my lowest point financially as a single man um came when i was in malindi mm-hmm. yeah and it was one of the reasons i decided to move mm-hmm. um i had worked i had done a couple of big projects mm-hmm. and unfortunately you know i'd done the work through agencies mm-hmm. and it was an influencer work it was a lot of production work a combination of influencer mm-hmm. stuff but it was it included a lot of mm-hmm. production mm-hmm. so i was unable to raise rent mm-hmm. for about i think the three months mm-hmm. and my landlord was it, italian he's called mr ilario you know I, like people always complain about landlords me i have the best thing to say about my landlord 
because I took him my LPO. Mm-hmm. I took my LPOs to him and I told him, bro, listen, I'm not liquid right now. Mm-hmm. I have money, but it's not in my pockets. Mm-hmm. This is my LPO. Mm-hmm. If you allow me mm-hmm. to continue living here mm-hmm. and work mm-hmm. without stress, mm-hmm. I promise you when I'm paid, I'll sort you out. Mm-hmm. And I did that. He used to call me like, are you okay? You know, are you, do you want to live here? Do you want to, because con- when I was moving back to Nairobi, he even asked me like, do you want to keep the house? Mm-hmm. Are you moving back? You know, all the best. You know, he wished me everything because I, we learned how to live together. Mm-hmm. That was my lowest point. The fact that I had to reach out to someone mm-hmm. and ask them, hey, you know, pandemic is crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. We're all working remotely. Mm-hmm. Um, and, that's the first time I felt isolated as a single man. Mm-hmm. I felt like I have nobody to reach out to. Mm-hmm. Um, and nobody knows what I'm going through. At mm-hmm. that point, I'm still paying. I'm still supposed to pay nannies. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to pay rent. Mm-hmm. I have utility bills. I still need Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. There's no regular mm-hmm. check coming in. Mm-hmm. I know I have a lot of money, but it's not in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And that's when I decided to move to Nairobi. It was like another struggle where I'm closer to my friends. Mm. If I'm going to freelance and be a struggling freelancer, mm. um, I would rather struggle where, you know, in a week, if I say, this week, I need to make 20 Gs. Mm. I can wake up in that week, I promise you I'll make that 20K. Mm. It's easier to do that in Nairobi mm. than when you're, not out, when you're out there, you're out there yeah. outside of Nairobi. Because yeah. when you know what they say about Nairobi, and out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. You leave Nairobi, everybody assumes, you know, you're no longer yo, interested. Yo. Oh, you're a Meshiba. They, that's what they say. <laughs> You've made enough. Yeah. You, you don't yeah. need more. You've made enough. So yeah. they don't even consider you for plans. They yeah. don't reach out to you. And, you know, and I'm like, bro, it's, it's the same me. Yeah. On the same, I have the same platforms, yeah. the same potential, yeah. the same impact. Yeah. It's just that I'm not in a place where I can get to you in half an hour. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I was the first as a single, single man. Yeah. Um, as a family man, I'd say the lowest point for me financially again um, was when I worked with someone. Mm-hmm. They subcontracted me to provide digital services for them. Mm-hmm. And this guy just would never pay me on time. Mm-hmm. I, I remember I'd just, um, I'd just gotten a kid. Mm-hmm. My, my, my son was just was born. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy would never pay me on time. Like he subcontracted me. I'd pangad myself with the money. So in the next six months to one year, this is how I'm going to grow my, my small agency. And I tell you, I kid you not, in the first six months, I only got two payments. Mm-hmm. So everything else was taking money from here, slapping it here, to taking money from here, <laughs> slapping it there. And what that does for you, you're not liquid. So you're not able to fulfill a lot of the ambitions and mm. dreams you have for yourself. Mm. And after six months, I told the guy, you know what? It's fine. I don't need, I don't need this stress. Mm. Let me just go back to regular job, mm. a regular job. Was there um, um, a difference in, I guess, psychological, emotional states in both those There was. Because yeah. see, for, for a lot of guys, you know, you, you identify yourself as a provider. Yeah. Without that provision, who are you like... I mean, it's, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's a pressure you put on yourself, but it's something you have to step up to. Yeah. You're not going to sit in a corner one day and just cry because yeah. there's, no, there's no work. Yeah. There's no do you what. You, bro, you have to go out there and look for yeah. money. Yeah. Because yeah. money is respect. Yeah. You know, the more of it you have, the more respect you have. Mm. The more of it you have, the more freedom you have, the more, the more shots you can call. Yeah. So it's in everybody's interest to make sure at the bare minimum, you have to make something for yourself that can accord you the respect you want mm. to receive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, last question. Um, now that's, I'm seeing these guys are looking at me badly. Mm. <laughs> last question. Um, again, in a family context, when you're now, I, I also come from, I come from a, a, um, a separated household. My yeah. folks are separated. But um, when you're now um, considering or sort of going down that road, yeah. what role does finance like what role does finance play in that contribution? I'm I'm married now, and I guess in my in my darkest dreams, where I'm like, you know, God forbid, God forbid, I I do you know wonder, and I'm like, oh, if this was to happen, 
like would I have the grace to be like yeah let's let's split this down the middle uh, <laughs> or let's figure out how this and that would go yeah yeah what what like what goes through your mind at that particular point I think I was angry for almost a year yeah because see when you when you link up with someone to do anything long term yeah you stop thinking about yourself as an individual yeah now you're thinking teamwork yeah you know yeah and you've done your long term plans based on teamwork so if you if you want to buy a car it's teamwork this is what we're supposed to do together you know we already had this conversation before yeah. we got serious yeah um if you want to buy land if you want to buy you know anything you're yeah. you're, you're doing once you know you're part of a team you stop thinking individualistic yeah, right now everything is a team and then you know like down the road you realize what well, you know i'm in the team alone mm. and now you get so angry because yeah. now you have to pick up some of those things yeah. as individual responsibilities yeah. when you got into that thing knowing yeah. these are team team responsibilities yeah. and so i was very angry yeah um and 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 for me i think it jerked something inside me because mm-hmm. I had my low point. Mm-hmm. Um, I had two low points. Mm-hmm. It was that one, and you know, you this could fix it by going yeah. back to employment. Yeah. And this guy is stressing me. He's a business partner, but he's not meeting his end of the, of the, of, of, of the stick. Mm-hmm. He's not holding on to it. Mm-hmm. My remedy was go back to employment. Mm-hmm. Um, for the second one, now I was like, okay, do I go back to employment or do I risk it as a businessman? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just decided, you know what? Diversify yeah. your income streams. There's nothing wrong with working. Yeah. Just make sure you have things on the side yeah. that make up for what you thought was a team. Yeah. So if I need two extra side hustles yeah. to make up for what I thought I was going to get from a team, yeah. then that's what I've been working on for the, yeah. last, for the last year or so. Yeah. Just to establish, like, I don't want to start stops. Yeah. So I've been very cautious. It, it it made me a bit cautious um i'm still i'm still a risk taker yeah. but then i take more times before i make my decision yeah. I, like i take it takes me longer to make a decision because now i have to assess everything what's the long term benefit yeah. short term benefits um in the near future what's going to happen if things go this way yeah. and that's that's how i make my decisions now okay yeah um last Last, last, last question. And so I guess when you're, because you talked about a joint account, when you're looking at, um, and I guess many couples do have joint accounts, when you're looking at a joint account now and you're like, okay, so what happens here? Um, um, my question is, you know, what does it take, if you know, if you have answered the question, like what does it take to not be clouded by whether it's anger, whether it's um, residual negative feelings towards someone or something to be like, you know what, um, let me be rational about this. Let me try and have some sort of rational agreement about how this joint account is going to get is going to get um, it's going to get distributed or split among whatever I'm going to do and whatever the next person is going to do. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it takes a bit of first. You you have to be confident in your ability to make money, because mm-hmm. if scarcity mentality checks in, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. You know, you're going to spiral out of control. Mm. Um, you have to be confident in your ability to make money. And then secondly, you also have to be, um, you have to be self-aware. It takes a level of self-awareness mm. to say, even if I go through a split um, or a divorce or a breakup, if I still have the ability to make money, I'm not going to spend my money trying to escape what I'm feeling. Mm. If I'm angry, if I'm disappointed, mm. it's not going to take my money yeah because then you'll do a lot of stupid mistakes that yeah. you're going to re- regret later on yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it takes a bit of um discipline it takes a bit of um innovation you have to be innovative now okay yeah. so if we can't make 30k from this source where are we going to make it from yeah it, it drives you to be a bit more innovative and then it also opens i still have that entrepreneurial mind from mm from primary school so personally when i when i say diversify your portfolio i mean exactly that your portfolio doesn't have to be something that brings you 200 300 thousand and you do a tcg five different companies that bring you 300 500 thousand it could be two that bring you 20 30 g's and then you have maybe one that brings you 300 g's yeah 
So it's diversify your sources yeah. of income. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are you looking forward to now? I guess uh, what would you what should we expect to see from Rama, um e- expect expect Rama Ramsey to come back bigger. Mm. Um I've been I've been hibernating mm. for a year and a half mm. just doing my plans because you know when you come back to Nairobi after you see what's possible outside of Nairobi you come back to Nairobi with a very different mindset. Mm. Mm. Um the the stuff I saw, the life I saw when I was outside of Nairobi, like if I take Nairobi money outside of Nairobi, what I can get, I finally started seeing why, you know, there's a, there's a <laughs> how do you say it? There's a reverse migration happening. Mm-hmm. Us guys want to go to Europe and the Americas mm-hmm. to make money. Mm-hmm. The guys in Americas and Europe are coming to invest along the coastline. Yeah. So they can make money. Because, yeah. oh, the amount of money you have in Nairobi, whatever you're making in Nairobi, if you're to transfer your expenses, the same expenses outside of Nairobi, mm-hmm. if you could work remotely full-time, yeah. bro, you'd have a very different life. Your mm-hmm. quality of life and everything I saw when I was in Malindi really opened my mind up to the possibilities that I can actually achieve if I came back to Nairobi with a focused and serious mind. Yeah. Make your money and then find a way to make your money work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was something. I think this has been our longest um, podcast. Yet. But you know what? I told these guys yesterday when 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 they said, when they said you were coming, I was like, I have. I think this is potentially going to be really long. Yeah. So I warned them at the very <laughs> least. But thank you so much. This is um, another episode. I hope you've learned or picked up a gem or two. So Rama was pretty vulnerable and and told us quite a bit of information. This is Financially Incorrect. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Tell us what guests you want to see next. And uh, follow us also on Instagram, on TikTok. I think we have a Twitter as well. Um, Yeah, and um, we'll see you on the next episode.